it has been brought to my attention that you've been slacking off your sound system tuning skills and not taking enough measurements. So in this video, I'm going to share with you seven tips to help you make your life easier and navigate the software and just have more fun in your job. Tip number one, the reference signal. Do you actually need to plug a cable into the back of your interface that feeds from the output back to the input? Yes, only if you care about timing and time aligning things properly. If you just want to do an EQ, for example, you just have your main left right speakers and you want to EQ them properly in the room and that's it. There's nothing else to align. You can use the loop mode. So in the reference, you can choose loop and not have to use any extra cables on your interface. So the software will look at the signal it's generating within itself. Now the problem with loop is that the software loses all sense of time when you do that. It doesn't have any reference anymore to align the measurement signal with the reference signal. But for EQing purposes, you can get away with using loop if you don't have an extra cable maybe, or just don't want to complicate your setup. Only EQ, yes timing no use a proper reference signal tip number two if you have multiple microphones you can actually make multiple measurements like you do in smart so by default you will get one measurement right here and you can either go to file and add measurement or you can hit Control a and as many inputs on your interface and as many microphones you have you can add measurements to capture them all together so when you hit that Control x to capture you are capturing all these measurements at the same time instead of doing doing one and then going and moving the microphone and doing another one and then going and moving the microphone. If you have a big interface, you can just plug multiple measurement microphones and place them wherever you want and capture them all at the same time. Third tip is related to organization. So if you look, I have a bunch of traces right here. It's really unorganized. And if I try to grab one, it kind of just seems to scroll. I can select one, but if I try to move it, it just scrolls. And the secret is here. You can move it. You just have to press and hold on it for a little while and then you can actually move it and reorder your traces. That's crazy. I know for the first I don't know how many months I didn't know that I can move the traces and I would just be stuck with whatever order I made them in. Following up to that, the fourth tip is that you can actually make a folder and put all these traces inside of that folder to hide them and organize more so you can go to file and add group or you can just click control zero we created a group let me use my previous tip and press and hold on it and move it up to the top and now i'll start grabbing all my measurements and put them in the group press and hold and move it on the group and it will become inside of it so now i can double click on the group and see what's inside of it i can see that i put one that is an average that does not belong here so i'm gonna just drag it and put it on the name of the group again and it's out of it i can double click on the group and i get back out of it i can also rename the group so let's say this is captures and i can change the color of the group so let's put it to a red and if I want to turn off these traces instead of turning them off one by one I can just turn off the group and I get rid of all that mess so I'm going to create another group for the averages I can create another group for the filters you get the idea and with that my project is a lot more organized tip number five is related to coherence and this is just an indicator of how sure you are that the measurement you took is actually good data if you have a lot of reverb and reflections in the room your coherence may be really bad and that will hide your traces you can't see what you measured so you can click on the graph and turn off use coherence and you will see everything but this does it for all the traces but maybe you don't want that maybe you have good coherence on most of your traces but just one or two of them have a lot of reflections and you're not getting good coherence on them so you can decide if you want to use the coherence or not per trace so i'll turn on coherence again in the graph and look it's hiding things and i can go to a particular trace select it and then click 100 right here so it will ignore the coherence and just for that trace i am seeing everything but for other traces i'm seeing only the coherent data which brings me to tip number six about showing and hiding you can show certain traces in certain graphs and hide them from other graphs you don't necessarily need to turn off the trace because when you turn it up from here you are hiding it from all the graphs but instead i can click on a certain graph and down here you have all i can click on that and turn off 
that trace in that graph. I'm still seeing it in the impulse and in the phase graph, but I've hidden it from the magnitude graph. Finally, tip number seven is you can edit the legend of each trace. So if I click on a trace, you can see some information right here at the bottom, the time window, the delay, the gain, the offset, the interface you use, the date and stuff like that. This is not just to read. You can actually click on here and type something. You can edit it. So if you want to type something more comprehensive to remember what you did, I can, instead of the M32 USB as your driver, I can just type in right here, M32 mixer. And I can add some other comments to help me remember things later. And you know what? I'll give you just one extra tip because why not? You can actually take a screenshot of your graph by clicking on the camera right here. And I can save a picture. And if I open it, you can see a high quality picture of my graph. Now, if you don't know how to take measurements, and how to read those measurements and take decisions based on these measurements. I've made a full video, I'll link it up here. You can click on the screen right now and watch it where I walk you through the entire process using open sound meter with your mixer or with your audio interface. So click on the video to go from zero to hero and I'll see you there.